what I see. <laughs> well, I was actually going to say, these two players I love very much because... <laughs> Look at it. Just look at it. On FD2, FD neutral. You gotta love FD neutral. Hello? I do. Uh, wow. These guys. Just scrapping. Not even. Not, uh, they're we just in New like York. What you patient. mean? There's no scrapping. Hello? Yeah, it's, it's like they're being very patient. Just kind of slowing things down. There isn't a lot of like dashing back and forth. And there's almost no jumping into the air. At least in the neutral sense. Like, All right. There we actually have an air-to-air -air trade. If we see that. PK Chris wins it. That's surprising. Normally, you know, if two characters are swinging, the one who has the sword usually wins. And if we're going to be talking about that, I really do love the way that we see, you know, PK Chris actually avoiding a lot of these hitboxes and placing his own instead. We saw Nair get out, um, you know, ranged by Bear and back air. And not only that, I know, I feel like PK Chris is just understanding of the fact that, you know, of, of where the actual hitboxes for, you know, Nair and um, Fair are on Lucina. It's really good. And that was looking a little bit scary because what, it, what did that lead into? End up smash. That's absolutely crazy. All right. But, oh, this is where the matchup actually gets uh, pretty tricky for PK Chris is when he's off stage. Of course, PK Chris, as a player, you don't get to be, uh, like, honestly, a top-level match like PK Chris uh, without learning how to recover. Granted, Mr. E is kind of... He just shuts people down off stage. I mean, this guy... Th the difference also between Mr. E game one and as he slowly adapts to his opponents, it's it's kind of horrifying. Absolutely. And not even just talking about, um, you know, adapting and whatnot. We have to talk about the way that PK Chris actually uses a lot of his, like, recovery paths because he's not afraid to go for something just like a regular up E. You'll see a lot of times, you know, Ness players like Syrup like tank that actually just are not afraid of using it because you have situations like that where you're super confident in your tech but that 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 was an attack that edge guard was beautiful did you see that she wait, can, wait, wait. can go out far you didn't no, know not only that i'm talking about that into it up beat the like the upbeat from ness the ricochet specifically leading into the back air because he grabbed the ledge and then he went super deep for that forward air and mr e not only does he have like Amazing spacing on stage. Once he goes off stage, he just has a plan in mind. It's Absolutely. not like he's not winging it. You have to be on top of the game, especially you know trying to edge guard Ness. Like that is that is some tricky feat right there. Oh, and this ledge trapping. You know Ness. <laughs> he might have like really solid hitboxes, but if you're having to get up off the ledge against Mr. E's, uh, I can't believe that tech. Mr. E's Lucina, it's still always a trend. It's just like so much, so hard. Look at this. What's the answer? How do you even make it back to neutral? So he fell out of the dash attack and that saved him. He had no invincibility, but because of the hitbox on a B, he and Christine couldn't even really contest it. Finally getting that kill with the back throw, but he's at 121%. And not only not only does it mean that you know he could die, but any hit that Mr. E now managed to nail on him, he's gonna be sent off stage, has to deal with Mr. E now edge guarding him. So a single interaction loss in neutral uh, is gonna lead to him in a terrible spot. Absolutely, you cannot sleep on this character and situations like that. You should not be doing a normal getup. Not there. I'm so sorry. But if you sleep on us, you will be surprised how how woke you'll be yeah. after. I mean, listen, how do you... uh? If, if you lose one neutral interaction and you die, how do you still win? Uh, by just never losing neutral. And that's kind of <laughs> what PK Chris is doing right now. Just able to outplay Mr. E so many times, but that neutral air just a little bit too big. Forced to recover once again. Mr. E has the control at the ledge. That's not going to be enough. A forward throw managing to reset the situation. But Mr. E needs to find the finishing blow. Otherwise, great up there. That was amazing. That, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that that's exactly what Mr. E was getting out. You saw, like, countless amount of times that he was just waiting and then turning around for shield. He was, he's been scouting that out this whole time, and he just got it because 
that was the one thing that made PK Chris feel comfortable. He went for it and got immediately destroyed for it. Very yeah, and nice. I, I think it's also worth noting that normally Lucina's and Marth's, they'll go up for up yet a shield mm. in that situation. But he actually did, he opted for up air instead, knowing it would kill. I think there was maybe a, like a toss up as to whether up he would actually kill from one side of FD to the other. I don't think it would have, so it was just optimal punishes. Absolutely. Knowing what he needed to do to actually win. But just speaking of optimal punishes, it's looking like we're going to see, you know, Mr. E just put on so much damage, especially from like hard calling out a lot of these neutral options that PK Chris has been using. But PK Chris has Mr. E at ledge, and it is just not going to work out for them. That's actually crazy. I really love, especially <laughs> just like not even in this game alone, you know, how Mr. E has been able to take control of every situation when he's on ledge and then immediately reversing it and making it feel like you can't breathe. At ledge, you are stuck in such a small bubble and you cannot get out. Yeah, and like even when PK Chris makes it back to the stage, he has his feet on the ground for just a second. It's only just a second because Mr. E tosses him off once again. Ooh, that air drop was so clutch though. Mr. E is, you know, he has been playing fantastically, but PK Chris clawing his way back. If he does, oh, no way he's gonna be making it back to stage past that counter. That counter? That counter does wonders. It does magic. I mean, every character that has a counter against S can, you know, I mean, we all know what, it, what they can do. But that's, I think it really speaks to PK Chris's recovery. That's the first countering of the upbeat that we've actually seen. And only that, it's one of those things where it's like you have to be really careful because if you go off stage and you're not careful, you end up dying just like that back throw is going to take out Mr. E's first stop. Oh, I love that. Knowing that the ledge was right there, he needs to go up and actually punish Mr. E while he's in free fall. Opting for back throw, I guess just wanted the marginal stage positioning. And I mean, I definitely agree with that. All of this pressure has led to about 59%, set three and extending. Oh, Mr. E's trapped in the corner still, even now. Finally, with this reversal situation, that's oh. what you were talking about. If you go off stage, not careful. Oh, oh man. What was the down air gonna do? He was going for it quite a bit, actually. Um, I honestly, I trust Mr. E that there was a timeline where that worked. Not this timeline, not the one we're in right now because he's down one stock to two, but that was feasibly the right answer. Maybe we need to, we need to just reshift Mr. E back into the right timeline, but it's looking like it's gonna be super, super hard right now because we have Mr. E at 98%. And oh. it's just looking like Mr. You know, Mr. PK Chris is. Oh. oh. I mean, He's a little too far for that one. Yeah, I understand the thought process behind it. And it was good recognition from Mr. E. He put that back air out only at the spacing that you would have recovered from. Uh, not dead quite Ooh. yet. Oh. Wow. Wow. Ooh, last time around. We saw PK Chris kind of make a, a comeback almost happen. Could Mr. E do the same thing? <laughs> one of the problems, though, is that Ness is one of the best characters in the game at last hit situations. He has so many options, freaking up tilt kills. This character, it, it looks like a child going through a sugar rush. <laughs> like, you would never think because, like, you wouldn't picture Ness as, like, a five-year-old crackhead. But like, you can imagine it, especially with this game. Like, look at all the tools. He just says, I gotta go fast and I'm not Sonic He's neither. He's constantly vibrating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He gotta go fast. Fast in air. Uh, I don't know about back air. I don't know. And all the tools. is pretty decent, you know? And it's not just the, also the other thing, it's not just the fast on the front end, it's the back end as well. The fact that so many of his moves have deceptively low end lag, meaning a lot of characters in this game's cast really struggle to punish him reliably. Lucina probably being one of the exceptions because as soon as she throws him, sees him throw out a move, she can go in there and just swing away with that disjointed sword of hers. You know what I really like, especially about the way that, you know, PK Chris is choosing a lot of these options, especially off ledge, is that although Mr. E can punish them, it's just in so many situations, Mr. E is not positioned properly to actually punish a lot of these get up options off of ledge. It's only when it matters though too, so. Uh. 
you know, one thing that's actually working out, sort of, it's subtle, but it's very, you know, very impactful. The fact that Lucina's run is so low to the ground. There have been a couple times where these Ness moves have just whipped because, you know, she basically puts her nose right on the, right in the dirt whenever she, you know, goes for even a fox drop. That's gonna go. Yeah, yeah. And that's gonna take that first duck. Mr. E with only 50% racked on right now. This is looking pretty good right now. If yeah. okay, Chris can just get back onto the ground. <laughs> you get hit by a single up air and all of that happens to you. And I believe that um Marcina up air is their fastest aerial. You know, not including up air. So and that's yeah, two three stocks to one. Why not? You know, Mr. E. It feels like the especially the offstage stuff is just clicking now. He's yeah. figured out what PK Chris's habits are. The counterplay that that he that he thought he had in his pocket, it's already being accounted for. And right now, this is just a dominant game three. We do have another game possibly because of um, uh, that's three out of five. But with Mr. E, this is just like the way he's gonna be playing for the rest of the set. Oh, PK Chris might have to uh, come to terms with losers bracket. Oh, not that. Oh wow. All right. Yep. I, that's the take me to game four. Three. Take That's me to the, game three. Game I, four? Game four. I have a pizza in the oven and I need to go get it and then immediately burn my tongue because I'm feeling like I just want to get this done and over with. But it's okay. We have potentially one to two more games? I think we're two one. We have one to two more games. This yeah. is game wait, game four. four. Okay. So if PK Chris wins this game, he took him back to Smashville. I hmm, curious. Uh, this was Mr. E's counterpick last game. I wonder what thought process. Oh, and oh, that nice tag. That was so smart. He managed to still shorten the distance because of the contact from that hit. And with that brilliant tech, he actually manages to preserve his stock lead. Right now, 41% of PK Chris is like, this is his second stock here. The clock is ticking. Death fast approaches. I don't know. This looked like it could be a repeat of that last game, but oh. that footstool isn't going to do too much right there. But good part on Mr. E just getting back to the stage, and we're going to see Mr. E keep on putting that damage. Lucina can do a lot, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now from Mr. E. Right, once more off stage, we've seen how Mr. E is able to end stocks there. I like that. Goes for the trump and peek it, Chris. Already ready for it. Rolls up onto stage. Oh. But that, that trade. Oh. It was not a trade he was hoping for, but we're looking like it is going to be super hard for PK Chris to actually make this, you know, um... I mean, come back happen. <laughs> Thank you for finishing my sentence. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm playing what you're putting down. Um, but if you notice right there, he actually got the parry and couldn't even get a kill off of it. Like, Mr. E's spacing, the way he's choosing his moves, it's really just... It's fantastic. And at this point, you're, if you're PK Chris, like, what are your options here? How do you actually engineer a comeback back in your favor when it feels like Mr. E just has your number at this point? Well, you know, you could... Res you know, he's been taking your stocks off stage. Maybe you could respond in kind. Oh, but not really. You want to know, like, I, I really love the way that the, the pace of this match kind of developed because out of overall, I really am not sure entirely if PK Chris... That was so smart! That was amazing. He got hit by the PK... I swear, though, getting hit by those two PK Thunders was just conditioning. He's like, yeah, I know you're safe to go for PK Thunder. I'm dumb. I'm just going to run into it every time.